And here's what we're going to be doing with Jose. Okay. Unfortunately, we're strapped for time, so the last question is going to come from Justin. The white shirt guy. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming. And uh, I read your book. I thought it was very interesting. Great. Um, one question I'd like to pose is, uh, how is it possible, well, you sort of touched upon this, that a district such as Union City receives 12000 for a student as of 2006 uh, and um, achieve that gap, become very successful, yet a district such as Asbury Park receive, uh, you said $27,000 a student not be successful. And furthermore, uh, should there be a cap on funding or stronger state oversight on the funding to these districts? Yeah, good question. And by the way, I'm happy to stay afterwards if any of you have the time, because uh, I love, as you can tell, I like talking about this stuff. Um, good question. So how did Union City do it for 12 or 14 grand? And Asbury is spending 25 or 27 and getting much worse results. Asbury is spending all that money, first of all, because it was available. And secondly, because they don't know what to do. If you don't know what to do, and a salesman arrives and says, hey, listen, I see your math scores are really lousy. Here's our new Whizbang software package that will address third and fourth grade math problems. And it's been successful. We had a trial run in El Paso. There were 19 kids involved. They outscored the kids that weren't in the program by 600 points. And then we also did it in uh, Gary, Indiana, with 19 kids, and here are the results. Oh, good. And it only cost you $300 a classroom. Oh, good. Well, and you'll solve your math problems. Great. So we buy that, and then another salesperson comes along, and they got a whiz-bang program for fifth grade science. And since you don't know what to do, and they appear to know what to do, and they're citing results from small-scale, unreliable studies, you say, great, I'll buy that. So you go into the classrooms in Asbury Park. They all have smart boards, None of, 5,000 each. None of the projectors work. None of the teachers know how to use them. But somebody came along once on a bonanza day for the salesperson and convinced them that smart boards would improve the quality of teaching. And it doesn't. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you know any road will get you there if you don't know where you're going. So that's what happens. And I believe that the highest spending districts are places where it's sort of an acknowledgement, gee, we don't know what to do. Could the state do more? Even a small district like Asbury, but I also cited Newark, which is a big district. They got a billion dollar budget. They have hundreds of thousands of transactions every month. How does the state, which has got, I don't know, one person for every three districts, know enough to, first of all, be able to get the information on an expenditure to say, well, that's, let's question that expenditure because you got another 92,000 to review. How do you do that? We've done it in cases where the districts, the state has done it, where the district has displayed such a pattern of inefficient, ineffective, or corrupt spending that we've sent somebody in and the legislature has granted that person, a state monitor, unusual authority so that they can stop expenditures, they can stop hiring, they can do... We've had this going for three years. We've now got monitors in about seven or eight places. I think it improves the chances, but it doesn't change the culture. If the culture is a cheating culture, hey, you don't have to do that because, hey, you start doing it, then we all got to do it right. Hey, we don't want that. So, and by the way, you can get by this way, and you don't have to show up at 8.30, yeah, because we don't have a check-in system, and you know, blah, et cetera, et cetera. If that's the culture, sending one state monitor in will not change it. However, if you send one state monitor in and they say, actually, this is the way you have to do it, you prevent bad things from happening. But you don't solve the problem of how do you establish a place where good things also begin to happen automatically. That's, I don't know how you do that. Anyway.
stick around. I suspect there are more questions. And perhaps we'll see everybody in two weeks for Ernie Rock on the thorny problem of redistricting, which will happen after the 2010 census. See you there in two weeks. You have been watching a presentation of Rosenet TV, an internet TV channel for the borough of Madison, New Jersey. Rosenet TV is a private enterprise operated independently of the municipal government of the borough of Madison, New Jersey. Any views expressed herein are solely the views of Rosenet TV and do not represent the views of the municipal government of the borough of Madison.